So the living queen principles build upon one another. Your level of awareness dictates your ability to perceive reality and your beliefs about that reality. A person consumed by thoughts and feelings that life circumstances are happening to them might find it difficult to believe that life circumstances are happening for them and through them. That person might have yet to experience the stage of awakening that helps them to see that life is happening through them. Moment by moment, we have a choice to feel victimized by life or not. Because we live in a reflective universe, the opportunities to practice don't go away unless you cut yourself off from the world to play it safe. But by playing it safe offers no growth inside your comfort zone. You might say, well, I was victimized. I get it. I'm in no way dismissing what might have happened to you in your life to cause you to feel and think this way. I am, however, suggesting you meet your experience with acceptance and surrender. Freedom or suffering is our choice. Resistant diminishes yourself and perpetuates the victim state energetically. Freedom means freeing yourself by accepting what happened, forgiving yourself first and foremost, and letting go of the resistance inside of you. So I have a question for you. Who is the most, who is the person that hurt you most in your life? So you learned in lesson one that energy is what makes up anything, everything in the universe and it starts with our thoughts. If you rehash old stories, imprisoned by your principles and hold on to bad experiences in your mind, you might see similar scenarios continuing to play out in your life due to this energy depleting itself. So you bring, you're in essence bring it on yourself because you're keeping that energy alive. You're the answer you've been seeking outside of yourself. You must be the hero of your life. And sometimes that means being the bigger person and releasing the resistance someone else has put on you. It's not what happens to you, it's how you respond. And that determines the outcome. So if you desire long-term substantial personal growth, you have to change your internal patterns before you see the outer world change around you. And that means responding differently to how you perceive yourself. So how you perceive yourself is grounded by core beliefs that come from early developmental years. If you were taught to keep your mouth shut and you lived in fear, or you'd be punished in some way if you express your opinion, you might have issues later when it comes to speaking up and communicating your feelings or even feeling your feelings. In this way, you perpetuate the pattern of victim. In essence, you create more suffering for yourself because it's familiar from the Latin word familiar, family, belonging to a household. Familiarity and family are where your beliefs come from and how you see yourself in the world. Your family might be the collection of humans that were, you were chosen, not given a choice, but you certainly have the choice now about how you respond to your family of origin and how you allow these roots to affect your life's fruits. If you want everlasting personal freedom that results in more happiness, joy, self-love, and harmony, it starts with awareness and presence. And from that presence, you feel your feelings, honor them and ask and take what you need in integrity instead of scavenging for crumbs and wondering why everyone else seems to have their needs met but you. Systematically, you're gonna to begin to build the foundation of trust in yourself and you create safety and security for yourself, not by hiding out, but by being more of you. If you want others to perceive you in a certain way, you have to first show up for yourself. You gotta believe that you're worthy of receiving before greatness can actually happen. Here's another question. What are three flaws or imperfections that you believe you have? It's impossible for you to love yourself if you still hold anger, fear, bitterness towards someone else. With this kind of inner resistance, you're not available to receive great life's greatness. You can't receive with a closed fist. As you receive and increase your awareness, you begin to feel this internal resistance evaporating and thus opening the gateway to a higher purpose. You realize the transformation of your perceptions and beliefs about yourself and the world around you. The art of being the hero of your new story is the refusal to be defined by going back. This requires you to let go and release the principles that you once held onto so dearly. You're more than that. You're love in action. 
Transformation is about unlearning old patterns of the conditioning that you've clung to out of ignorance. And the darkness in life may actually be what is showing you the power of your own inner light. Love yourself and all of your imperfections as you grow and evolve. So transformation is not about the next destination, but about the person that you're becoming along the way. Don't allow yourself to go back to sleep. Doubt, insecurity, and fear arise when you ignore your inner light, your power source. So it's up to you to transform your thoughts, perceptions, and beliefs. This responsibility is what attracts a life that you love living. The exercise next will help you to release your past and start embracing your present.